morning. I'm going to set up the dress form for the Isabella McTavish Fraser wedding dress. Um, and I'm going to do it here in my rooms uh, at uh, the historic Colonial Williamsburg. Um, and it will just be kind of fun to have an opportunity to set up in a quite lovely setting and capture it on film. Form all this way and gone to a great deal of them. Oh, uncertainty and indecision and pernickety-ness <laughs> about finding a suitable suitcase to pack a dress form in is because this dress form has been cut down and then padded up each in judicious areas for the historical silhouette for 18th century so that then the stays that had been made to fit Georgia Goff, the model who we made the dress on, and it fits her perfectly, um, we could basically create that foundation for the dress to look to look right and hang right and fit right in the bodice um, for display. Um, and I'm here in America with several talks where the dress is on display and talked about and a bit of a dressing demonstration in some cases, um, as I did the other night, sort of impromptu at the Keeler Tavern Museum in Connecticut. Um, so having a dress form that I'm familiar with and know exactly what its shape and size is, nothing really is quite the same as a custom fit. And it's the same with the clothing. Another factor is actually set up time. Um, when you're traveling, if you arrive at some place that you've only got half an hour or, well, I was very, very lucky the other night at Keeler Tavern Museum where I arrived and actually had about three hours to settle in, get set up, get changed, have a bite to eat, sit down with a cup of tea, and chat with the with my hostesses. Um, but set up time is a key feature and, and I'm when when I have traveled to museums to speak, sometimes I have very little time to set up. Um, and being familiar with the dress form, yes, a museum can often provide a dress form that's already assembled. Um, but getting a good fit on a, a dress form body that hasn't already been shaped um, takes some time. And another factor is that we have to put the stays on onto the dress form. And these stays are, fortunately, they're just back lacing. But lacing stays take, well, it takes time to get them on, get them situated, get them fitted, and then to lace them up. Um, and perhaps have a little bit less freedom in how to do that than you would on a, on a human body, because the human body changes every day, and yes, you, you do things a little differently each time. Whereas the dress form, it is what it is, and you've got to get it so that the dress form fits properly and the dress and is laced up tightly enough so that then the, then the dress will sit smoothly around it. So with this, having it dressed and being able to take the dress for a body on and off the stand, put it all the way in a suitcase, means the lacing doesn't have to be done and undone over and over again in a hurry. Now as on a real body, it appears that this, that this is actually loosened up a little bit and could be.
okay on this form is the width of the shoulders. So I get them up there as best I can so that the gown is going to stay put. Um, and I use some headed pins, which is probably not very kind of long term to the fabric of the dress. But in essence, to be absolutely honest, for a few minutes until I get the rest done, the gown is hanging on the back by those pins and the excess in the back panel, it does stick out a little bit. Now, to finish getting this dressed, then the weight will be more evenly distributed and actually the weight will sit on mostly on top of the bum pad which is a skirt support and that's exactly what it's designed to help do is support the weight of the gown and once that happens then generally the back and the shoulders kind of rise up and sit much more lightly over the dress form and so that the whole gown is not in fact hanging from the top but it is being supported a bit more evenly through the waist. But until that all happens, it is true that I'm juggling quite a lot of weight trying to do what gravity does and fall to the ground. Right, so I've got a mixture of pins here. Two more pins. I use silk pins that were the red head so they don't show much. Okay, keep the shift sleeves through just to eliminate so they're not adding bulk to the bodice. Now are we using light? Are we... Okay, so this gown quite crucially does have lacing strips to take pressure off the fabric front otherwise that again that front edge would be taking a lot of kind of weight of holding the gown onto the body the stays, the lacing in the back just a bit, I've actually got just a little bit more overlap, a potential overlap, in the front edges of the gown, which often, to be honest, it's a pretty close call as to whether that's going to meet. Um, so we have there, now for the sake of demonstration and tops and things, sometimes I'm going to just leave that resting and it looks like it's all fitted and fastened. Uh, unless you get up close and realize, no, it is left loose. Because I do want to be able to reference the lacing. I usually towards the end of the top or during the QA session, Q and A session, people ask about things like that. How does it close? How does it stay on?
would like if I want to keep for this one. Hmm. This is for a little bit of work and a bit of butting, if you like, back and forth. Um, I do like to be able to show this bodice front so I cut on the straight grain. That does require keeping this tart and set up and down, up and down. It would be very, very tempting for a smooth fit with power. I seem to have uh, lost a little girth there on the dress form by tightening the stays. To get smooth fit, I'd overlap more, but then you start creating more of a diagonal and it doesn't really, um, I don't think, um, honor the original dress and its striking appearance of the set. So there we have it. That's the final touch.